off the wall, he's got a lead change. Goes back halfway down the field, and most of the field is stuck. The third race of the season gives us another look at those competitors who ran in the very first Grand Prix of this Marbula One season back at the Minty Mania GP. Hello everybody, I'm Greg Woods, here at the Honey Dome. We'll talk about that in just a second, but in the meantime, did you know that 66% of our viewers are not subscribed? Click on that red button and subscribe for more. Also, check out our new sponsor, Cosmo Credits. The Bumblebees play host to this weekend's Grand Prix. And getting things started after a little bit of hesitation there, coming out of the gates is Yellow for Mellow Yellow. Tied for third place in the most spots gained in the first Grand Prix with six. Yellow had a great finish, at least compared to the starting spot, and has a decent time already. Starry for Team Galactic left the gate shortly thereafter and hit the attenuator on the first split. That really slowed Snowy down, and you can see the difference in time through the second sector here in Q1. Yellow comes across, a 31.804 is the time to beat. Starry will not do that, although made up a little bit, down by a tenth. Next up, Clutter from the Balls of Chaos, a team that sit fifth in the standings overall, tied with Team Primary, and a 703 goes purple by a little distance, but then slows to a crawl, did Waspy right behind. It was a pretty big difference between those two marbles. Can Clutter keep up that speed going purple through the hive? And is gaining nearly another tenth. Waspy in the meantime, because of that slow to a crawl in the first sector, was one second adrift, nearly two by the second. Clutter resets the P1 time. And where was Waspy in all of this? 2.05, Waspy came in last in that Minty Mania Grand Prix, 15 seconds off the winner, and that was with a red flag across 23 laps. Mallard, who qualified very well, third back at the Minty Mania GP. Purple through the first sector, but so is Azure. I can tell you Azure would love to have a great finish, did not even qualify, didn't make it out of Q1 the last time out. Azure has lost time though, Mallard, has lost purple, but is still going personal best and does get the pole so far. Now remember, this is Q1, so it's not getting the pole, but it's at least getting out of Q1. Azura well off the pace, dead last thus far and risks a DNQ for the second time. Smoggy hitting that attenuator really hard. We're gonna see several marbles doing that, I imagine, over the course of this race. Also, Hop out there on the track was another one of those who did not qualify in the first Grand Prix. Looking at our bottom finishers in the overall standings for the team, Team Galactic, the O-Rangers, the Savage Speeders, and the Minty Maniacs, all sitting on zero team points through two races this season. Smoggy, second and three quarters back, Hop is over two and a half. And once we start to get a few more marbles here, Good time to remind you that 9th through 16th will be locked in after Q1. They will go no further. Now, if you finish outside of that top 16, you will not run at all this weekend. You will not qualify. Q2, though, becomes a top eight race off with the top four advancing to Q3. Lime Lime and Prim. Needing to gain some time, Prim, who struggled there, did go purple, but uh, had lost so much time in the first sector, it didn't really matter. Prim goes third, and Lime Lime comes across in seventh. Lemon Lime, teammate, did not qualify back at the O-Raceway one week ago. Now here's Razzie and Momo of Team Momo is the latter who lead the overall championship, 46 points to Crazy Cat's Eyes, 45. In fact, Momo 
had Mimo at the helm in the last Grand Prix and led every single lap except for the first, but is struggling here in qualifying half a second off the pace. Razzie, though, is in the green as they head into the third sector. What can be made up? Razzie goes third, Momo eighth. 12 runners out of 20 have raced. So Mallard is very close to being guaranteed to advance out of Q1 at the very least. Bumble and Shock heading out now. Shock from the Thunderbolts, Bumble from the home team, Bumblebees. The crowd is a buzz, trying to will Bumble on. Dead even through the first split. Three tenths ahead in the second. Can Bumble go to the top spot? Shock will go second. Here comes Bumble. And just misses out. Oh, so close for Bumble. Cosmocrats, leaving Earth on November 5th. It's not a terrible thing qualifying provisionally in second place. Because again, you just have to get in the top eight. You see that red section on the pylon over there to beat? You want to stay out of the bottom if you can. C and Speedy. Speedy qualified fourth back at the Minty Mania GP, but lost 12 spots over the course of the race, partly because of the incident with the conveyor belt. And the Savage Speeder still sitting on a goose egg for the overall championship. Speedy, though, is purple in the second sector. Heading down to the line, the sprint across, good enough for third. That's a decent qualifying position. Now Snowy, four runners to go. Yellow Eye will be close behind the dominant runner who led every single lap back at the Minty Mania GP. First couple of splits, uninspiring for the pair. Yellow Eye and the Crazy Cat's Eyes have done a great job through these two races. Finished second at the O-Raceway with Red Eye. Now here comes Snowy. Down the front stretch, over a second off. What can Yellow Eye do? Just good enough for seventh. That is close to being knocked out of Q1. Clementon and Minty Drizzle are last to run. So Razzie and everybody above is safe to move out of Q1. Hop and Azure are guaranteed to be eliminated. And they're both pretty even. Minty Drizzle and Clementine coming through the first split, although the O-Rangers runner is four hundredths up through the second sector. On the run down to the line, will they advance? They will, they'll take provisional P1. Minty Drizzle also advances. The Minty Maniac streak of not making it even to the grid has been broken. So Lime Lime, Waspy, Azure, and Hop are out. That makes two straight races that Azure and Hop have not qualified. Load them up into the gates. We are ready for Q2 and the top eight race off. Clementon sits at the front with Mallard and Bumble and Minty Drizzle right behind Minty Drizzle. Definitely the inexperienced one of the bunch and falls to dead last at the first turn. As a result, you need experience in Marbula One and it just goes to show how big an impact that can have. It is Mallard who consistently gets away well on the starting gates. Interesting lines coming through the waggle section, very reminiscent of Bumblebee's direction finding, or direction telling rather. Bumble struggles though, a little bit less than Mallard through the hive section, which would make perfect sense, and takes the lead. So Bumble for the Bumblebees, trying to bring it home and at least finish in the top four here, which would guarantee a run at the pole in Q3. Speedy looks to the inside, Bumble goes to the outside at the split. We see a lot of marbles going to that outside, in fact, but it's Bumble who clears them all pretty cleanly. Speedy, Shock, Mallard, Clementon, Minty Drizzle, Clutter and Razzie make up the eight as they run so far. Clutter falls to last, but that transfer position for fourth is between Shock, Mallard, and now Clementon. Who's trying to get by Mallard here with just a couple of corners to go. Down the front stretch, Bumble will advance as will Speedy. Mallard and Clementon make up the top four. Shock, Minty Drizzle, Razzie, and Clutter will go no further. And so, we get ready for the run for pole. 
Our top four in the last race for qualifying were Smoggy, Yellow Eye, Mallard, and Speedy. And we're running toward the pole here, and it's Speedy. Just getting away a little bit more cleanly and takes the lead. Bumble in second place. Mallard and Clementon battling well behind the top two as they split coming through the waggle. Around the turn, very nice line there as you can see from that overhead spot, but Speedy has built up a big lead. This is letting Mallard get a run on Bumble as they come through the hive where Bumble is traditionally strong and sure enough, takes the lead. Around the final turn, is Bumble gonna be able to hold it and get pole in his home race? We'll come up the conveyor belt and we'll have to see in the final lap. Bumble, one lap to go, needs to be able to hold it here. Oh, and they both hit strongly on that attenuator and everybody is right up together. Clementon close behind the top two. Less than a length between them, it's nose to tail. Mallard has some work to do to catch up to them, but it's Bumble holding up the train as they come on to the hive. Bumble keeps it. Seems to be unbeatable through there, but is he beatable around the final turn? Yes, Speedy will hold on and take pole position in front of Bumble. Mallard will start on the second row alongside Clementon, who finished a couple of tenths back. That was a fun qualifying here at the Honeydome. The Savage Speeders know that a win would put them well up into the field. They already got one point for pole position, so they are off of the bottom. Can Bumble break that host curse? Tune in, subscribe, and we'll see you tomorrow for the Honeydome Grand Prix.